Select a layer in Affinity Photo. It needs a layer. So go to Filters, Colors, and down to Procedural Texture. And you'll get this very basic panel. In fact, nothing's happened, nothing's changed there. Well, you've got some presets. You can run through the presets. Great starting point. So if you just want to, just select one of the presets. Now, I'm not gonna do that now, this point, because what I wanna do is right at the core of this equation. So I'm just gonna show you to add an equation. So add an equation, just click here, a little plus there. And straight away, you see what happens. You just get the red channel. Just get the R selected. You can see there the R selected. And, well, you can enter a value. You can enter zero or one. In fact, if you enter two or three, doesn't matter. You enter two as well, but it's zero and one. That's it, between zero and one. So you can have 0.5, 0.2, whatever. So you can put that and you can see it just a subtle change. 0.6, slightly redder. And that's what it's doing. Well, what you can also do is you could, of course, use the G and B. So you can just end up with gray. And of course, you can again do exactly the same. So 0.2, obviously it's going to get darker as you go to closer to zero. And if you put one, it goes to white. And that's basically run through. And also you've got the alpha channel, which is super useful as well. But I'm not going to do that in here, but just want to show you the channels. But let's just go with the G and just there, just R. R is the only one that's actually being used at the moment. Well, what you can now do is you can add additional ones. You don't have to just use those. Of course, there's a point where it's no point adding more than, say, four, because you've got only four of these. So if you add another one, I'm not actually certain what happens. I've never seen anything but I suspect that it would make no sense. So, okay, someone please put in the comments below if you think that actually there might be some uses for more than five or six equations. What you can do, you can enter a value, different value, say 0.2 there, 0.5. Well, obviously at this point, it's not that great. It's not very useful. You can just change the colors for the whole thing, which is great. However, what if you want to make some sort of variations in terms of like the X and Y, obviously the X and Y, the horizontal and the vertical. Well, you can enter X. So you can enter X if you want. You can enter X for that one as well. And you can see the result, obviously just Y, because it's obviously quite a large value, the X all across the screen. But what you can also do is you can make equations that are slightly different than that. However, X is not very useful because it's not a relative thing. You can move these layers as well. And you can use that by using Rx. And you can see Rx, slightly different result, but Rx and Rx, and I'm gonna put them in all of them. Now you'll see down here, you've got red, green, and blue. You don't have to have that. You could actually have just the site, so green and blue, and then of course it gets rid of it there. But you can, so you can sort of change these things, red, green, and blue. You can have two as well, perfectly reasonable. So you've got Rx, Rj, and so on, so on. With that, now you can move it. You can see you can move it, which is quite nice. That's the thing for the Rx. But also you've got, of course, Y. Ry, you've got the vertical. So you can add that into the equation as well. So you can say, well, Rx plus Ry. Now, obviously, I'm creating a, just a very random, not particularly do much, that's more creating a gradient. But you've got Rx, Ry. And again, you can see now, because you've got that, you can move these backwards and forwards. And that's for the red, green, and blue still which is what I'm gonna do for the rest of the video. However, what you can also do is you can actually make maybe slightly more common. Now there's a lot of functionality in this. And the best way to find all the various functions, one, check my procedural texture videos. I've got about 50 or 60, probably even more, of videos showing different formulas that you can put into these to create various different effects. And all basically starting from presets, to be fair. But there's also a lot of functionality. If you go to help, you've got Finity Photo Help. And if you look up procedural texture, it will show you all of the mathematical things. You've got tans, sines, cosines, etc. that you can use. Not as many as I would like. There's fin random features would be lovely and loads of other options would be great as well. But you got what you got. So what you got, you can actually put divide by 100. And that creates a nice bl slight blurriness to it as well. So you can create some, so I'm gonna paste that into, and they don't have to be the same equation in each. You know, you could have a different equation in that one and that one. Perfectly reasonable, you could put 200 there. 
So you can see a slightly different value. I'm just going to have 100. But however, what you can also do is you can you can see because of course it's a, a rectangle and not a square. If it was a square, this would be straight across. But of course it's a rectangle, so it's slightly there is slight variation there. So it's just pushed up slightly, but you can always move it down. But again, you've still got that angle. However, if you want to change that, you can tweak it. What you can do, you can put say 0 0.5 times. So you can vary the RX and you can create, see some variations there. And you can also put that in front of there, 0 0.7 times and you can do the same obviously with the other ones I could do that as well but you can see that you can put 0 0.5 times rx however you can see down the bottom you've got these custom inputs it's, it's nice to have 0 0.5 it's good but however you can if you want to just enter a there and you could or something else it doesn't have to be a and you can also enter b now as soon as you do that because these it doesn't know what A and B is. So anything you put there that doesn't know, it says, no, I don't know, it will just put it back to just that. It's not always handy, but anyway. However, that's what it does. But you can put here. Now I was using a real, a 0 0.2, so you can go for it. But you can also put a range minus one, one there. You can go for integers, etc. There's and so on. There's a variety of different ones. I'm just, generally I always stick to real. That's just me. But you can try the other ones. Just try the other ones out. You've got angles as well. They're all very useful. You've got a lot of different controls here that you can mix and put into your equation. However, got that. So you've got there and I want another one. So again, I go down to real and you can see now I've got A and B and they're set initially to zero. That's the default. So you can put initial value for them. So 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. So you can see again, but now because of that, you can tweak it. So you can put 0 0.64 and you can vary it over time. So that you can just turn around and say, well, I don't want that 0 0.6 without requiring to edit the equation each and every time, which is fine, but you can do it, but it's not, you might not want to do that. And you can do that. So you can put them all in all of them. So again, you get back to the same color for all of them. But of course, what you can do, if you want to, you can stretch this a bit. I mean, you can also, resize this you can put different ones here so you can say you know what i want c there and i want d so you don't you're not limited i don't know if there's a limit to how many you can have but so again if you've got b and c there and you can have say different values for those 0 0.5 so you can create some very interesting gradient designs very quick you can see the effect there and of course you can do the same with the bottom one there as well if you want to create real d and you can make that to E and F. And you can see the result there. 0 0.5, etc. 0 0.2, and so on. So you can create some very interesting designs simply by doing this. Just go through all these settings. And what you can also do is, of course, you can save a preset. So say you create this, it's not the most amazing equation, I must admit. It's just a very simple, just Rx and Ry, very, very basic. You can make much more complicated than that. You can put times ry, and you can put square roots in, whatever. Whole range of different ones, but you can always then go up here and create a preset. So you can create your own preset. So create preset, and I'm gonna call it test. Very original, and I can put it to color patterns. Great, now it's saved. Also what you can do now, because you've created this, you've got an option here, say 0 0.27, and you think, you know what, I want 0 0.27, I want 0 0.8. And you can see you can create another interesting color effect there. What you can then do is go there and create a value preset, because you've changed the values from the default. You can now go create value preset, and you can say preset one, very original name there. And you can then call, bring it back anytime via this preset. So you've got this preset here, just down here, and also you've got the preset here, and you can create multiple presets that you can just bring back. Once you're happy with that, you've got your equation. I say very simple, basic equation, but you can vary it in many ways. Just plus and put some more and so on and so on. You can make a very, I'm just gonna quickly show you, you can make a very long equation, complex as you want. Lots of variations of this times 
four times three, whatever. You can see you can create a variety of different designs just varying these things. And you make it as long as you want. And of course, another thing that's great, you can stretch it out further so you can make a very long equation. Then you can click apply and you've got your design. So there's your quick grain. However, with procedural, you can always go to a layer and you've got new live filter layer and colors and you've got procedural texture there. So exactly the same thing. You've got the live procedural texture there and you can go to down the bottom and you'll notice that your test one is there as well. So you can now access it there. You've got the same equations and you've got the same custom inputs and you can just vary them. And now, because of that, you've also got blending modes. So you can say darken, run through, color burn, darker, lighten, screen, etc. And you can create a variety of, as well as opacity as well. So you can vary that. And again, that is then in the layers panel, which you can then modify at a later time. So that's a run through of the procedural texture, basic level run through probably loads of other things you can do with it. You've also got filters. You can repeat it as well. And also you've got like, you can also fade it as well. Obviously, if I've just applied it, that would be the case. So hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.